In this videotape, we will be reviewing our work on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of fractions, and we will go over solving simple fractional equations. We will be dealing with rational expressions or algebraic fractions. That is, expressions of the form, say, x plus 2 over 5x, fractions in which there are variables present in the numerator and or the denominator of the fraction, the top and or the bottom. The basic plan that we'll be following is to go over what we did with arithmetic fractions and try to apply these same ideas to algebraic fractions. And the basic principle of fractions, the fundamental principle of fractions is given here. It says that A over B is equal to A times K over B times K, we'll, we're, where we'll assume that B and K are not equal to 0. OK, in words, what is this saying? It is saying that if you start with a fraction, A over B, we we'll assume, of course, that B is not 0, and you multiply the top and the bottom by the same non-zero quantity, K, you will get an equivalent fraction. On the other hand, reading the other way, if you start with a fraction like AK over BK and you divide the top and bottom by the same non-zero quantity, you will also get an equivalent fraction. During the course of this videotape, we will have need to use this principle in both directions. We will be using it in this direction when we want to build a fraction to higher terms. And we will be using it in the reverse direction when we want to reduce a fraction to lowest terms. Let's try an example using arithmetic fractions to get the hang of it. Let's say we start with a fraction 2 thirds, and we would like to find the fraction equivalent to 2 thirds that has a denominator of 24. We would like to know what to put into the numerator so that we will have an equivalent fraction. To accomplish this, we have to realize that 24 is really 3 times 8. Well, if we multiply the denominator by 8 and we want to get an equivalent fraction, we will have to multiply the numerator by 8 as well. Then we will have, as we have in the principle of, fundamental principle of fractions, that 2 over 3 is 2 times 8 over 3 times 8. We will have an equivalent fraction. And this is, of course, equivalent to 16 over 24 so that we see that 2 thirds is equivalent to 16 24 so This was accomplished by multiplying the top and the bottom by 8. On the other hand, suppose we start with a fraction 8 twelfths, and we are asked to reduce this to lowest terms. All right, to reduce this to lowest terms, we will have to divide the numerator and the denominator by 4. We realize that 8 is really 2 times 4, and 12 is really 3 times 4. But 2 times 4 over 3 times 4, if we were to divide the top and the bottom by 4, we would get an equivalent fraction of 2 thirds. So once we factor the numerator and the denominator, then we can see how to divide the top and the bottom by 4 to get an equivalent fraction, 2 thirds. All right, now let's move on and try to use these ideas when dealing with algebraic fractions. In our first example, we have the following that we wish, wish to reduce to lowest terms. Minus 12x squared over 15x. We like to reduce this to lowest terms. When we were working with 8 twelfths before, we noticed that the 8 and the 12 had a factor in common, namely 4. Similarly, we would like to see a factor in common for the numerator and the denominator of this problem. And you might realize that 12x minus 12x squared can be written as minus 4x times 3x. And similarly, 15x can be written as 5 times 3x. So then it becomes in the form a times then it comes into the form a times k over b times k. And we can divide numerator and denominator by 3x. So this reduces to minus 4x 
over 5. So minus 12x squared over 15x after you divide top and bottom by 3x reduces to minus 4x over 5. By the way, the answer minus 4x over 5 can be written in that form with a negative sign in the numerator or the minus sign can precede the fraction minus and then 4x over 5 or the minus sign can be in the denominator, 4x divided by minus 5. These are all equivalent. However, the first and the second are the most common ways of writing this particular answer. We very rarely put the minus sign in the denominator. For our second example, let's reduce the following to lowest terms. Twenty-seven x cubed y squared z to the fifth divided by eighteen x y to the sixth z squared. What I'm going to do is to start by rewriting this fraction, the numerator and the denominator, so that the factors become more obvious. I'm going to write 27 as 9 times 3 and 18 as 9 times 2. So it becomes clear that they have a factor 9 in common. Here we have an x cubed and an x. Well, the x cubed can be written as x times x squared. In the numerator, we have a y squared, and in the denominator, a y to the 6. But the y to the 6 can be written as y squared times y to the 4th, because y squared times y to the 4th would be y to the 2 plus 4, or y to the 6th. Also, we have a z squared downstairs, and z to the 5th upstairs can be written as z squared times z cubed. Okay, this is equivalent to what we started with. However, we now see that we can cancel out certain factors that the numerator and the denominator have in common. We can divide numerator and denominator by 9. We can divide numerator and denominator by x. We can divide numerator and denominator by y squared. And we can divide numerator and denominator by z squared, leaving us with upstairs 3x squared z cubed and downstairs 2 times y to the fourth. So the final answer is 3x squared z cubed over 2y to the fourth. Now when we want to multiply two fractions, a over b times c over d. The rule for multiplication is simply multiply the numerators and divide by the product of the denominators. So to multiply two fractions, and we assume, of course, that b and d are not 0, we multiply the tops and divide by the product of the bottoms. And of course, we know how to do that with arithmetic fractions if we have 3 fifths times 2 sevenths. This tells us that the answer is 3 times 2, or 6, divided by 5 times 7, or 35. So 6 over 35. Or if we had 4 sevenths times 5 eighths, this would give us 4 times 5, 20, divided by 7 times 8, which is 56. Now, while 6 over 35 was already in lowest terms, there were no factors in common, 6 factors into 2 times 3, neither one of which is a factor downstairs, we do have factors in common with 20 over 56. In fact, we can write 20 as 4 times 5 and 56 as 4 times 14. Then we can divide numerator and denominator by 4 to get a final answer of 5 fourteenths.
On the other hand, there is another possibility of handling this in the following way. We have 4 sevenths times 5 eighths. Now we realize that what's going to happen is that we're going to multiply the tops and divide by the product of the bottoms. This means that we can really cancel any factor and we can cancel any factor in the numerator with any other factor in the denominator. It doesn't have to be right underneath it. So for example, we can divide the numerator here by 4, leaving us with 1. The denominator here by 4, leaving us with 2. And then say this is 1 times 5 over 7 times 2, which is 14, giving us the same answer. But we were able to do the reducing before the multiplication rather than after. And sometimes it's easier. Actually, most times it's easier that way. So when you're multiplying fractions, while you can just multiply the numerators and divide by the product of the denominators, it's to your advantage to first see if there's any canceling that can be done before you start. In this case, we could divide numerator and denominator by 4. You needed to use this other number in the denominator, not the one that was under the 4, but that's perfectly OK. So we get 1 times 5 over 7 times 2, 5 fourteenths. All right, now let's try to use this on algebraic fractions. Let us multiply the following. Ten y divided by six xz times twelve y squared z over eight y cubed. Okay, we can just multiply the numerators and divide by the product of the denominators, but I'm first going to factor and see if I can possibly cancel out any common factors before I start. So let me rewrite this as the following. I'm going to write the 10 as 10y as 5 times 2 times y, the 6xz as 2 times 3 times x times z, 12 as 2 times 6, but 6 is again 2 times 3, y times y times z. I mean, you could leave it y squared. It's obvious that that's y times y. And 8 is 2 times 4, but 4 is again 2 times 2, and then y cubed. As you get experience, you won't find you need to actually put in this intermediate step. OK, now let's see which factors we can cancel out. We can divide numerator and denominator by 2 here, again by 2, again by 2. We can divide numerator and denominator by 3. We can divide numerator and denominator by y once, twice, three times. And we can divide numerator and denominator by z. And let's see. That leaves us on top. There doesn't seem to be anything else that can cancel out. We have a 5. And on the bottom, we're left with the x and the 2. 2x. So the final answer is 5 over 2x. For our next example, let's try this. Multiply 3x squared y cubed over 2z squared times 6xz over 9y cubed times 1 over x cubed. OK. We will write this as 3 x x y y y over 2z times z. 6 can be written as 2 times 3 times x times z here. And then 3 times 3y times y times y and 1 over x times x times x. We can now divide numerator and denominator by 3 by 
three again by two by y cubed by x squared and then by x. And finally, divide numerator and denominator by z, giving us now everything here that was canceled out. When I'm dividing numerator and denominator by 3, this is really 3 divided by 3. That's really a 1. 3 divided by 3 is a 1. So these are not zeros. These are really all 1s times 1. So we have 1 upstairs. And downstairs, the only thing that remains is there is 1z. Everything else is a 1. So the final answer is 1 over z. Okay, so we know how to multiply fractions. Now to divide fractions, if we want a over b divided by c over d, the rule is quite simple. To divide two fractions, we invert and multiply. So we have a over b times b over c. Or we multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. a over b divided by c over d is a over b times d over c. Invert and multiply. Or multiply by the reciprocal. Just want to mention that a over b divided by c over d could also have been written a over b divided by c over d as a complex fraction in that form. So if you see it this way or this way, the result is the same. Either way, it's a over b times d over c, whether it's written with the division symbol this way or with the line to indicate division. OK, let's try an example, the example number 5. Minus, we're going to divide, minus 3x over 4y divided by 15x squared y over 7. OK, the rule is to first multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll multiply by 7 over 15x squared y. All right, now you actually don't have to keep rewriting everything factored out as far as it can go the way we've been doing. You can sort of do this in one step. You can say, I'll divide numerator and denominator by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 5, 15 divided by 3 is 5. And we can divide numerator and denominator by x. x divided by x is 1. x squared divided by x is x. And there doesn't seem to be anything else in common. So upstairs, we're left with minus 1 times 1 times 7, or minus 7 over 4 times 5, 20 xyy, or xy squared. So minus 7 over 20xy squared. For our next example, let's try this. This is problem 6. 12x squared divided by 15y. Okay, That fraction divided by 8x squared y cubed. Okay, the first thing to realize is when you're dividing by 8x squared y cubed, it's really 8x squared y cubed over 1. So now it looks more like what we've been doing. This will be 12x squared over 15y times, we'll now multiply by the reciprocal, 1 over 8x squared y cubed. All right. We'll be able to divide numerator and denominator by x squared. We can divide numerator and denominator by 3. 12 divided by 3 gives us 4. 15 divided by 3 gives us 5. Then we can also divide numerator and denominator by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 
So we're left with upstairs just one, and downstairs five times two, ten, y times y cubed, y to the fourth. So one over ten, y to the fourth. For our next example, we have the following. 4x over 6y times 7x squared over 4y divided by 7x cubed over 6y squared. Here we have a combination of multiplications and divisions. We will rewrite this. 4x over 6y times 7x squared over 4y, and since we're dividing here, we'll be multiplying by the reciprocal 6y squared over 7x cubed. Well, we can divide numerator and denominator by 6, by 4, by 7, by y squared. These two y's cancel out that y squared. And the x and the x squared cancel out the x cubed. Okay, the proper answer here, of course, is 1. In each case, when I, when I cancel these 4's, I really said 4 divided by 4 is 1, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And the same in all the others. So really what you have is a lot of 1's here and a lot of 1's here, giving you a final answer of 1, not 0. Just because you've canceled everything out doesn't mean the answer is 0. The answer to this problem is 1. Okay, we now come to addition and subtraction of fractions. And as we learned with arithmetic fractions, the rule is very simple. If you have two fractions that have the same denominator, you can add or subtract these fractions by combining the numerators and placing them over the common denominator. So to add two fractions with the same denominator, add the numerators and combine over the same denominator. And similarly, for subtraction, subtract the numerators and combine over the same denominator. But this is only valid when they have the same denominator. For example, if we have 4 ninths minus 3 ninths plus 2 ninths, these fractions all have the same denominator. So we can combine the numerators. 4 minus 3 plus 2 over 9, giving us 4 minus 3, 1 plus 2, 3 over 9, and 3 ninths reduces to 1 third if you divide numerator and denominator by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we have an answer of 1 third. Similarly, We can extend the same idea to algebraic fractions. If, for example, we had 11 over 4x plus 3 over 4x minus 6 over 4x, we would have 11 plus 3 minus 6 over 4x. 14 minus 6, that's 8 over 4x. And 8, of course, is 4 times 2 divided by 4 times x. We can cancel the 4's, divide numerator and denominator by 4 to get a final answer of 2 over x. So the same idea that works with arithmetic fractions can be applied to algebraic fractions. However, sometimes you have to be a little bit careful, even if the denominators are the same. Let's look at the following example. This will be number 8. Say we want to take 8a plus 2 divided by 3a and subtract from that the fraction 7a plus 2 over 3a. Well, the fractions have the same denominator. So we can combine the numerators 
and place it over that denominator. But when you're combining the numerators, you have to realize that you're subtracting, and the second fraction has more than one term in the numerator. And each one has to be subtracted. So this is really written as 8a plus 2, take away 7a plus 2 in parentheses. Now, we didn't have that problem over here. We didn't need parentheses because there was only one term in each numerator. So it was clear, 11 plus 3 minus 6 all over 4x. Here, however, you can't just say minus 7a plus 2. It has to be minus, in parentheses, 7a plus 2. And then we remember that this minus really means it's a minus 1 that has to be distributed through the parentheses, giving us minus 7a minus 2 as we change the sign of each term in the parentheses. And now we combine 8a minus 7a is 1a, plus 2 minus 2 is 0. We have a over 3a, and that reduces to 1 third after we divide numerator and denominator by a. OK, in problem 9, we have the following. 3y minus 4 over 5 take away 2y minus 9 over 5. Once again, we, com we have the same denominator, so we combine numerators over the common denominator. 3y minus 4 take away, in parentheses, 2y minus 9. This gives us 3y minus 4 minus 2y plus 9, distributing the minus 1, minus 2y plus 9 over 5. 3y minus 2y, that's y. Minus 4 plus 9 is plus 5. y plus 5 divided by 5, and that's as far as you can go. You cannot cancel the 5s. You can only cancel common factors, not terms. 5 is a term in the numerator. It is not a factor of the numerator. If this had been y times 5 over 5, then you could cancel the 5s and get y. Because then 5 would be a factor in the numerator. It would be joined by multiplication to the y. And you could undo it. You could divide top and bottom by 5. But here it is not a factor. It is joined by addition to the y. And you cannot simplify this anymore. OK, now what if the fractions do not have the same denominator? Well, let's say you want to add 5, 6, plus 1 quarter. If fractions do not have the same denominator, when we're working with arithmetic fractions, we learned that we had to build a fraction equivalent to these fractions that did have the same denominator. And then and only then could we combine the numerators. OK, the question is, what denominator could we combine over? Well, we're looking for the smallest number so that 6 and 4 divide evenly into this number. Now, in a pinch, you could use the product of the denominators. 6 times 4 or 24, but very often there is a smaller number. In this particular example, you could actually combine over 12. And your work is somewhat simplified if you find the lowest common denominator rather than just use the product. OK, we see that 6 goes into 12 evenly and 4 goes into 12 evenly. We want to build fractions equivalent to the ones that we had having denominator 12. Well. Whereas we want to change 5 6 into some number of twelfths, and we want to change 1 quarter into some number of twelfths. So we have to say, well, what did you do to the denominator to get 12? 6 times 2 would give us 12. Well, if you want to multiply the denominator by 2, you have to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. So 5 6 is equivalent to 10 twelfths. Both the numerator and the denominator have been multiplied by 2. In the second example, you say, what did you do to the denominator to get 12? You had to multiply by 3. So you have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. In other words, 5 6 is 10 twelfths. 1 quarter is 3 twelfths. 
we now have the original fractions equivalent to these fractions that have the same denominators, and we can combine the numerators. 10 twelfths plus 3 twelfths gives us 10 plus 3, 13 over 12. Okay, let's try a slightly more complicated example. Well, we have we would have to actually think a little harder about what the least common denominator is. This will be problem number 10. Let's say we have 2 fifths minus 9 tenths plus 5 twelfths. We're looking for the smallest number so that 5, 10, and 12 are all factors of this number, all divided evenly. Well, if it's not obvious what the low, least common denominator is, one thing you can do is to factor each denominator completely. That is, write each denominator as a product of its prime factors. 5, of course, is already prime. 10 can be written as 5 times 2. And 12 is 2 times 6, but 6 is 2 times 3 then the least common denominator is found by taking each factor the greatest number of times it appears in any one denominator. OK, well, 5 appears here once, here once, here not at all. So the greatest number of times it appears in any one denominator is once. So we take it once. 2 appears 0 times, 1 time, 2 times. The greatest number of times it occurs is 2 times. So we'll take it twice. 3 occurs 0 times, 0 times, 1 time. So we'll take it once. This tells me that the least common denominator is 5 times 2, 10 times 2, 20 times 3, 60. 60 is the smallest number, so that each of these numbers divides evenly into it. OK? So we're going to be building fractions, each having the same denominator and equivalent to the original fractions. We would like to write these three fractions, all having the denominator 60. OK, what do we have to multiply 5 by to get 60? To go from 5 to 60, we'd have to multiply by 12. So we'll have to multiply the numerator by 12 as well. How do we get from 10 to 60? We multiply by 6. So we'll have to multiply the numerator by 6 as well. How do we get from 12 to 60? We have to multiply by 5. So we'll have to multiply the numerator by 5 as well. This will give us 24 sixtieths minus 54 sixtieths plus 25 sixtieths. We have three fractions, all with the same denominator. We can combine the numerators. 24 minus 54 is minus 30, plus 25 is minus 5. So minus 5 over 60, but that can be reduced further. If we divide numerator and denominator by 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1, 60 divided by 5 is 12. So the final answer is minus 1 12. OK, now let's try these ideas on algebraic fractions. Let's combine the following. 3 divided by 4x cubed y plus 5 divided by 6xy squared minus 1 over 3xy. We want to first find the least common denominator. So we'll take each of the denominators and write it as a product of its prime factors. Well, 3xy is already written. This factor is going to get 6xy squared is 2 times 3xyy. And 4x cubed y is 2 times 2 x, 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 y. So the least common denominator. Well, 2 occurs twice, once, 
zero, so we'll take it twice. Three occurs, zero, once, once, we'll take it once. X occurs three times, one time, one time, so we'll take it three times. Y occurs once, twice, once, we'll take it twice. So we get as our least common denominator, 4 times 3, 12 x cubed y squared. Therefore, we are going to transform each of these fractions into an equivalent fraction having the same denominator, namely 12 x cubed y squared. And just like we did with arithmetic fractions, we're going to ask ourselves in each case, what did we multiply the denominator by to get the new denominator? And we'll have to multiply the numerator by the same quantity. OK, to go from 4 to 12, we have to multiply by 3. x cubed to x cubed, we multiply by 1. y to y squared, we multiply by y. So we have to multiply the denominator by 3y. So we'll have to multiply the numerator by 3y as well. Similarly, what do we have to multiply this denominator by to get that one? Well, to go from 6 to 12, we'd have to multiply by 2. To go from x to x cubed, we'd have to multiply by x squared. To go from y squared to y squared, we'd multiply by 1. And finally, over here, to go from 3 to 12, we'd multiply by 4. From x to x cubed, we'd multiply by x squared. From y to y squared, we'd multiply by y. So now we get three fractions here, all of the same denominator. So we can combine the numerators over the common denominator. And what do we have? We have 3 times 3y, that's 9y, plus 5 times 2x squared, that's plus 10x squared, minus 1 times 4x squared y, minus 4x squared y. And there's really no further simplification that can be done on that problem. Now, with what we already know about handling fractions, we're also in a position to solve simple fractional equations. Suppose I ask you to solve for x the following equation, x over 3 minus x over 5 equals 4 15 All right, now actually the simplest way to handle a fractional equation is to get rid of the fractions. What we're looking for is a number so that if we were to multiply both sides of this equation by that number, it would be a legitimate thing to do that. We can multiply both sides of an equation by any non-zero quantity. If we were to multiply both sides of this equation by that number, we should get an equivalent equation but without fractions. What we look for is the least common denominator of these denominators. And in this case, it's fairly obvious that it's 15. We will multiply both sides of the equation by 15. When you're multiplying, remember, it's really 15 over 1. So you're really multiplying fractions. Here we have 15 over 1 times x over 3. 3 goes into 15 five times, so we can just leave it now. 15 times x over 3 minus 15 times x over 5 equals 4 fifteenths times 15. 15 has to be distributed through the parentheses. 15 times x over 3 minus 15 times x over 5 is 15 times 4 over 15. In each case, we can think of it as 15 over 1. 3 goes into 15 5 times, so this reduces to 5x. 5 goes into 15 3 times, so this is minus 3x equals, here, the 15s cancel 4. So we have an equivalent equation without fractions. 5x minus 3x is 2x equals 4, and then dividing both sides by 2 x equals 2. And you can also go back. We don't have the time now, but you can go back and check this equation in the original 
with the x equals 2, go back to the original equation to check. Okay, now please bear in mind that there is a difference between the example that we just did, problem 12, let me just rewrite it here. Problem 12 said solve for x. x over 3 minus x over 5 is 4 fifteenths. There's a difference between that and the following problem, which says combine x over 3 minus x over 5 plus 4 fifteenths. You have to pay attention two directions. This says to solve for x, and you have an equation. This just says combine. OK, the first thing to remember is when you have the equation, you can multiply both sides by the same quantity and get rid of the fractions. Here, however, you don't have both sides. So you only have one side. You cannot multiply by 15 and get rid of the fractions. You can only do that when you have an equation. Here, the only thing you can do is to build equivalent fractions having the same denominators, 4 fifteenths, of course, doesn't change. To go from 3 to 15, we multiply by 5, so we'd have to multiply the numerator by 5 as well. To go from 5 to 15, we multiply by 3, so we'd have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. Now we have equivalent fractions all having the same denominator, so we combine the numerators 5x minus 3x plus 4 over 15, or 2x plus 4 divided by 15. OK, let's try another example. Solve for x. x plus 1 over 2 minus x minus 2 over 3 equals 5 thirds. We want to solve for x. It's a fractional equation, and we're going to try to multiply both sides by the correct number so that we will not have fractions. And in this case, the least common denominator of 2 and 3 would be 6. So we'll multiply both sides by 6. It'll be 6 times x plus 1 over 2 minus 6 times x minus 2 over 3 is 5 over 3 times 6. 2 goes into 6 3 times, so it's 3 times x plus 1 minus 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 times x minus 2. 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 times 5 is 10. Now we must distribute the 3 through the parentheses, 3x plus 3, and here we have to distribute the minus 2 through the parentheses. Minus 2x plus 4 equals 10. Combining like terms, we have 3x and minus 2x, that's x. 3 plus 4 is 7. x plus 7 is 10. Subtracting 7 from both sides of the equation, we'd get x equals 3. And you should go back to the original equation and check. 3 plus 1 would be 4 halves, that's 2, take away 3 minus 2, 2 take away 1 third. 6 thirds minus 1 third does check out to be 5 thirds. OK, I'd like to finish off by just doing one word problem involving fractions. Okay, just giving you an idea of the kind of problem that you can handle. Okay, in a scale drawing of a room, all actual lengths are diminished.
by the same, are diminished in the same proportion. If a 12 foot wall is to be represented by a six inch line segment, how long a line segment would be needed to represent a 15 foot wall. Okay, now this is going to give rise to a fractional equation. We're going to set up a proportion. The 12 foot wall is going to be represented by a six inch line segment. And we want to know how long a line segment is needed to represent the 15 foot wall. Let x equal the number of inches in the line segment. needed to represent the 15 foot wall. X is the number of inches in the line segment needed to represent the 15 foot wall. Then we can set up the following proportion. X inches represents the, the 15 foot wall just as 6 inches represented the 12 foot wall. X inches represents the 15 foot wall just as 6 inches represents the 12 foot wall. So the units check out. Inches is to feet as inches is to feet. To solve this fractional equation, we will multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator, which in this case is 60, the smallest number, so that they both go into it evenly. 15 goes into 60 four times, leaving you with 4x. 12 goes into 60 five times. 5 times 6 is 30. And dividing by 4, x is 30 over 4. Dividing top and bottom by 2, 15 over 2, or 7 and a half. So we'll need 7 and a half inches. Okay, a 7 and 1 half inch segment will be needed to represent the 15 foot wall. Okay, how long a line segment is needed for the 15 foot wall? A seven and a half inch line segment will be needed to represent the 15 foot wall. And that brings us to the end of this tape.